Cornet. You are a Boston Celtic for one more year. Cornet did enter free agency after he won the NBA Finals with the Boston Celtics, but right when NBA free agency started at 6 p.m. Eastern time, Brad Stevens gave one more year to Lou Cornette. Honestly, I love it, man. You know what you're getting with this guy. You know what he's done for you the last year that was such an important year for the front office, for the team. And it's even better because he was sat behind Chris Das Porzingis on the depth chart. And now Porzingis may not be available until December of this year. He will miss the start of 2024-25 NBA regular season. So you're going to sign Lou Cornette to another deal. See what he can do for you in this next year while Porzingis is still rehabbing. And hopefully help you win Banner 19. All right, let's go ahead and dive deep into what we think about this recent signing from Brad Stevens, the Boston Celtics. But first things first, nonstop Celtics videos all year long, including live shows once a week. We're talking rumors. We're talking news, trade rumors, free agency signings, breaking news does not matter. We've got it all here for you guys. Plus, it's free. So go on ahead, hit that sub button for me. Join 38,000 loyal subscribers here on this channel. We're talking anything and everything that has to do with your Boston Celtics. So all you guys got to do is hit that sub button for me. Producer Smitty is going to join in here with me talking about the big man, the green cornet, Luke Cornet, the dab king himself. <laughs> That was the biggest ick I've ever done in my entire life. But you it know was what? Something. If Cornette does it, I could do it. All That's right. right. He was Let's doing talk it at the about this. Too. Let's talk about this because we knew coming into free agency, it was probably either going to be re signing free agent Xavier Tillman or re signing free agent Luke Cornett. Brad yep. Stevens wasted literally zero minutes. He did it once free agency opened. The first signing. So I want you to go on ahead. How do you feel about them choosing Luke Cornett possibly over Xavier Tillman? Yeah. As far as choosing him over Xavier Tillman, I'll talk about that in a second, but Cornette is somebody that they've been comfortable with over the past couple of seasons. He has been somebody who can affect shots at the rim. Hasn't really been a stretch big like he had been in previous stops in his career. I know in New York he shot substantially more three-pointers than he has with the Boston Celtics, but that hasn't necessarily been his role. He's been a lob threat. He's been a pick-and-roll guy, and he's been somebody who can protect, protect the rim and play decent enough interior defense to stay out there on the court. Now, when you're playing a team like you did in the, with the, the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA Finals, yeah. it wasn't exactly a situation that Luke Cornette was suited for, I guess. With, the, with the, how much the Celtics wanted to switch on Dallas ball handlers, Luke Cornette really wasn't somebody that they were comfortable having out there um, because, you know, honestly, Dallas would have been smart to just put Luke Cornett on an island and get him switched onto one of their guards or forwards or somebody who right. can handle the ball, take him right to the rack off the dribble. So as far as perimeter defense goes, yeah, Xavier Tillman provides probably a better option there. But Luke Cornett, with the way that he affects the rim, with the way that he knows the flow of the offense, I think that is the biggest key here 100%. with re-signing Luke Cornett is he's so comfortable in the offense. He makes the right reads. He's a very underrated playmaker. He always knows where the right pass is to make. And he's so comfortable in this Boston Celtics offense that I think that they were comfortable with giving him another short-term deal here. He understands his role. He's not Porzingis. He's not Al Horford. He understands he's going to be number three on this depth chart here. But when he does come in, I'm going to be honest, it took me a while just to not completely grunt out loud like, come on, you're putting in Luke Cornett. Mm -hmm. It took a while, but I do think his game developed a ton this last year. He only averaged 10 minutes for the Boston Celtics throughout the NBA playoffs. That's what he was averaging minutes per game. And when you think about it, they never played more than five games. It was pretty obvious Joe Mazzulla didn't trust Luke Cornett to be in the NBA Finals playoffs type of scenario. And that's okay because you're obviously signing him not to be your front runner for the center position. But it is going to be pretty interesting to see what his role will be now with Porzingis possibly out until December, yeah. which is why another big reason why if, if Porzingis is not injured, and rehabbing after a successful surgery, you may pose the question, do they re-sign Luke Cornett? And that could be no. But, like you said, he knows the system. He's already shown you what he can do. He's also shown you that he got better this year. He could still continue to get better throughout the years. I mean, look at what he's done in just the last season. He played 63 games. He averaged five points per game, four boards, which is 
a lot more than he has in the last couple of years. And he did play with the Boston Celtics since 2022. So that last year when he played 69 games, that was with Boston as well. A block per game, 70% from the field. And you cannot forget the most important stat here is that he is 100% from a three-point line. I mean, free, free throw line. Free throw line. Nope. Three-point line. Oh, yeah. And he also <laughs> he was, went one for one in the regular season, baby. <laughs> he was also 100% from the free from the free throw line as well. This in the season. regular season? He uh, Maybe not 100%, but he was. He was very, 90. Yeah, he was 90%, 90 percent from the free throw, throw line. So somebody you can, you're, you're comfortable with going to the line. Somebody you're comfortable yep. with taking threes if you need him to. And he's somebody you're comfortable with. Playing in the absence of Chris Asporzingis, which he did for a great portion of this season. Luke Cornett, right. 63 games played this year, 69 games played last year. And a good portion of those ones that he's missed have been due to this being a coach's decision that he wasn't you know, a good matchup for that night. He's been incredibly available over the past two years for Boston, and that's why they were comfortable bringing him back. And that's what you really need right now coming off the bench. You need availability because the last thing you want is to look at your injury report and you see that Porzingis is hurt. Al Horford is resting, and Luke Cornett is also hurt. That's what you don't want. So Luke Cornett providing 63 games this last year, and you got to think just some of those games he just didn't play because the Boston Celtics were healthy and they didn't need him which is always great. I think he's gotten better, and I think he will continue to get better now playing for one more year under Joe Missoula. All right, what's your one-word reaction to Celtics re-signing Luke Cornett? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. My one-word reaction, elite. Just elite. Brad Stevens doing this the minute the door is open for free agency. Re-signing Luke Cornett, who I've seen dab more than I've seen my 12-year-old cousin dab. I just think... This is elite, man. That's uh, my word was just gonna be dab. Dab. Let's do it. Just dab. Let's I hate do doing it. it, but I gotta. I gotta <laughs> talk Shout about out it. Luke. I gotta talk about it. It's Luke Cornett. All right, here's the Celtics under contract right ahead of Luke Cornett re-signing yeah, there, but add, you now you're gonna to add list. Luke Cornett. We don't know the full details just yet. Obviously, Woj has not tweeted that out when we are making this video, which is literally like two minutes after he was re-signed. So we'll make a short. We'll let you guys know what his details are. But now you have Jalen Brown. You got Jason Tatum. You got the starting five coming back. But with Porzingis now, Horford still on the roster. That means Luke Cornett's going to have a very similar role to what he did last year, which is what you want. He was okay. he was fine. He was just that. He was fine in the role that he had. But when you look at the other team options, we know that they already accepted Sam Hauser's. $2 million he'll make next year. Possibly an extension coming. We'll keep you guys updated on that. Now, Nemius Keita, they did not accept his team option heading into the year. That doesn't mean they can't re-sign him moving forward, but it's kind of interesting now because I think this sets up a pretty interesting free agency for the rest of the Boston Celtics because they just re-signed Luke Cornett. Now there's a big fat question mark. Do they bring back Cornett and Tillman from free agency? I don't know if there's really a point in bringing back both because I personally think you could still possibly go out and get another NBA big if you really didn't want to re-sign Tillman for the vet minimum and you could just kind of leave it at that. I don't know if you bring back Tillman Smith. Yeah, it's interesting because like they also declined the team option on Nemius Keita, which is a move that they made in order to help facilitate a long-term deal with Nemius Keita. So I think they like what they've seen as far as the development from him goes. And it seemed like, as for per all the Celtics beat reporters over the past couple of days, it seemed like a, an or situation, not an and or situation. Luke Cornett or Xavier Tillman. Yeah. I, I personally thought that Xavier Tillman was a better big to play the Celtics style of basketball with the switchability that he has on defense and the improving three-point shot that he has. He nailed that one in the finals, and it was a big momentum shifter. Celtics bench got real hyped up uh, because of that. But who knows? Maybe, maybe Luke Cornett it has more of a stretch big um, opportunity for him this year. Maybe they'll let him take a couple more jumpers out there. But I, I like the efficiency Luke Cornett plays with. I like the intelligence Luke Cornett plays with. And yeah. it, he's one of those guys who, like I said, is just comfortable in this system. He makes the right plays, and he'll be effective like he was in Boston. I don't see any reason as to why he drastically improves, but I don't see any reason why he drastically declines yeah. the production either. He's going to be there. He's going to be serviceable, and the Celtics are happy to have him. He's a great locker room guy. Fantastic locker room guy. The Celtics love him. They love when he gets in. They love when he made that 1-3 that he shot this regular season. Every time he makes a free throw, the guy's got a different dance that he's doing, running back up and down, coast to coast. I mean, he's just a good player to have on your team, if anything, for a morale booster. Like, you, like Smitty said, you know what he's going to do. 
That's pretty much it. And that's okay because he has a one-year deal with the Celtics. And after that, if he actually does decline, then you're done. Then that's it. And, you know, the Celtics were comfortable not playing him in certain, in certain games and in certain scenarios this season. I'm, I'm sure that they'll, it'll be the same situation this year. I, I think that this was a safe move made by Boston and Brad Stevens. Brad likes Luke Cornett. Um, and you, know, you can't forget, he's got that, that, funny, that funky contest where he jumps from about 10 feet away from the defender, puts his hands up, and hopefully he's blocking the rim and affects the shot. It works. I don't know. He <laughs> if you be... turn him horizontally, it would look like he's diving into the pool it's, it's with how that he blocks from the three-point yeah, line. He, he hasn't been doing it a ton lately, <laughs> but you never know. That could come back into the arsenal as well. I like the signing. I'm, personally, <laughs> I'd probably give it uh, a B here. Just, you know, I can't say Luke Cornett is an A re-signing, yeah, it's... but uh, it, it, it's definitely a move that Boston should have and did make. I mean, you know it works. You know it works. You just got the ring to prove it, so you know it works. So with that being said, I'm going to go same thing with Smith. I'm giving it a B. Luke Cornett, he's a fine ball player, and that's about it. And sometimes that's okay when you've got possibly two of the highest paid players in the NBA about to be on your roster. When you got Tingus Pingus, when you got the 38-year-old Dominican father of five, when you got Drew Holiday and Derek White locking down your backcourt. It's all right to have a fine basketball player. But what do you guys think? Grade the signing A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, just subscribe, man. I'm telling you, you're not going to regret it. And what's even better is that free agency has just kicked off and Luke Cornett and Brad Stevens were the first to make a move. If you want the latest on your Celtics any anytime, anywhere, go on ahead, hit that sub button for me because I promise you will not regret it.